Alrighty guys, what's going on? Linky here, and in today's video we are going to be talking about Pokemon Legends Arceus. In one of the more recent trailers for the game, we learned about the Diamond and Pearl Clan, groups of people living in the Hisui region who seem to have some kind of connection to the legendary Pokemon Dialga and Palkia. But of course, if you know anything about Pokemon lore, there is a third member of that trio, the legendary Pokemon Giratina. In this video, I want to speculate about what a Giratina clan might look like and what their impact on the story of Legends Arceus could be. With that being said, let's jump right into things. The Diamond Clan and the Pearl Clan, two groups in the Hisui region that are going to be interacting with you, the player character, in Pokemon Legends Arceus. There's also a group of merchants that we met in the newest trailer, and they seem to have some kind of connection to the greater mythos of Legends Arceus as well. But one of the things we haven't heard about yet is the influence of Garatina. Now, everyone knows Garatina's lore in the Pokemon world and how its connection to, Di uh, to Dialga, Palkia, and Arceus works. But in this game, it seems as if all of these legendary Pokemon have groups of people that worship them. Dialga, of course, has the Diamond Clan. Pearl, of course, being the clan that represents and seems to worship Palkia. Garatina is the third member of this trio. Garatina, of course, was theorized to have been banished to the distortion world by Arceus. It is the Pokemon that governs over antimatter, over this alternate world to our own. It is seen as a member of this trio, and in the cutscene in the Sinjo Ruins, Arceus can create an egg of one of these three legendary Pokemon, Dialga, Palkia, and Garatina. So this is a trinity of sorts. Are we going to see Garatina's presence in this game? And if we are, are we going to see a connection to a Garatina clan? Now, there are some obvious threads to pull here. Garatina, in a lot of ways, is seen as almost the devil of the Pokemon world, almost an alternative to Arceus being the god of the Pokemon world. And while that is mostly fan speculation, I can definitely see a scenario where the Garatina clan, or the, we could call them the Grisius Orb clan, or the Platinum clan, which would, it would fit its name much better, because uh, in the, in these games, we don't see them known as the Adamant clan and the Lustrous clan. These, of course, are the orbs that represent Dialga and Palkia. So a Platinum clan would be very interesting. You could see a scenario where a Platinum Clan is an evil antagonist of sorts to the Diamond and Pearl Clan. Maybe the Diamond and Pearl Clan have grand visions of using Dialga and or Palkia in order to quell Arceus's rage. Arceus's rage, of course, we're all assuming based on what we've seen, some of the story threads we've seen from Legends Arceus, is the reason why a lot of these wild Pokemon have become enraged and are attacking humans. So maybe these two clans see the legendary Pokemon as the solution. Solutions. Maybe the Diamond Clan thinks Dialga can quell Arceus's rage. Potentially the Pearl Clan thinks Palkia can be the one to do it. Maybe we have an alternate scenario where the Garatina Clan, the Platinum Clan, believes that it's not that Garatina can quell Arceus, but that Garatina can defeat Arceus, can overtake the power that Arceus has. This could make them naturally an antagonist, someone you have to deal with in the game and fight, and maybe at different points in the game, you're working together with either the Diamond Clan or the Pearl Clan in order to thwart whatever efforts the Platinum Clan are making. You could naturally make them an antagonist, but there also is another way you could possibly go about this. Now, before we go any further, I just wanted to mention that the vast majority of you guys who are watching these videos aren't subscribed to the channel now, of course. As I always mention, subscribing is free, and you can unsubscribe at any time. It would really do a lot to show me that you're enjoying these Legends Arceus videos, and that you want to see more in the future. And if you do subscribe, please be sure to turn that notification bell on so you never miss another upload. Let's get right back into the discussion. There's another way you could definitely look at an influence of a Platinum Clan. Now, I want to make it very clear, a lot of this is speculation for the game. We don't know a ton about what the story is going to be. We know that you're trying to complete the Pokedex, and we know that, for some reason, Arceus is doing something to the region's Pokémon that is a threat to the humans that also live here. We know about these clans, we know about the merchants, we know about your galactic team, your expedition team, very Mystery Dungeon vibes there. So maybe they take a page out of Generation 3's book. Now, in Ruby and Sapphire, you're fighting one of the two evil teams, respectively, Team Aqua and Team Magma. In it, you try to stop them, and the leader of the alternative team aids your player character in defeating them. 
But in Pokemon Emerald, they flipped the script a little bit. They made it so, po so Team Aqua and Team Magma were antagonists to the player character. They were both trying to accomplish their goals at the same time, just having separate ideals about how to do it. Eventually, you the player character, along with Wallace, <laughs> for some reason, who's the champion in this game and not just the 8th uh, the gym leader, go to wake up Rayquaza to defeat the warring Kyogre and Groudon. It fits in with the greater mythos of the Pokemon world. These two Pokemon fought historically and Rayquaza had to break it up. Rayquaza is essentially a parent trying to break up two children fighting. What if we see a similar thing with the Platinum Clan? The Diamond Clan and the Pearl Clan are clearly trying to do something to quell whatever Arceus's rage is. I think that's very clear by some of the subtext we've seen in the trailers. Maybe both of their goals are not holier than thou. Maybe there are some ulterior motives, or maybe their goals of, of usurping Arceus and whatever it is choosing to do is something that's actually upsetting the balance of nature, upsetting the balance in relationship between people and Pokemon. The Giratina Clan, the Platinum Clan, I gotta get these names right, knowing this, feeling that these, this is a threat to the Hisui region, helps the player character in trying to deal with the Diamond Clan and the Pearl Clan. They can speak to the, uh, the already existing history of Garatina. Garatina seemingly the banished Pokemon. They understand what it's like to feel the wrath of Arceus, and they don't want the, D the Diamond Clan and the Pearl Clan to also have to face it in the way that Garatina, the Pokemon they worship, also faced it. There's some really interesting lore things here that Game Freak can play with. Some really interesting things that will really expand the relationship between people and legendary Pokemon. What makes a Pokemon legendary or mythical? Is it simply its status in the hierarchy of Pokemon? Or are the stories and the history of what those Pokemon do in relation to people, in relation to trainers and other Pokemon, does that play a part? If a Pikachu accomplishes a legendary feat through history, does it become a worshipped legendary Pokemon? And does a Pokemon need to be legendary to be worshipped? We know a bunch of stories through the Pokemon universe of Pokemon being worshipped by humans for various reasons. We know Pokemon get classified as legendary with uh, air quotes in the Pokedex all the time. Arcanine is the legendary Pokemon. Maybe there's a story and a reason behind why it got that classification. There's a lot of interesting things that can be pulled on in these games because the world is so open and the story can be so fresh they don't really have to work with the already existing constraints of the modern pokemon world they can tell a story that connects maybe to some of the lore in the cantilave library or maybe they can tell a brand new story there was also that little hint in the cantilave library about a hisuian quillfish or some oddly colored quillfish some oddly uh, spiked quillfish there's a lot of stories in there that they could pull from, and they're clearly setting up more in Legends Arceus to be told. So ultimately, I think it's a really interesting discussion to have. I think Garatina's presence is clearly going to be felt in this game. Uh, if Dialga and Palkia's presence is being felt in some way, and it has something to do with the Diamond Clan and the Pearl Clan, I think it's very obvious that some sort of Platinum group, a Platinum Clan maybe, could exist as well. Of course, I would love to know what you guys think. Do you think we're going to see a Platinum Clan? Do you think that the Diamond Clan and the Pearl Clan even are going to bring about Dialga and Palkia into this story? Or are they just going to worship the Pokemon and we're not really going to even hear from them? I would love to know what you guys think. And as I mentioned before, if you enjoyed this discussion video, please be sure to leave a like. I really appreciate it. It shows me that you guys want to see more and it helps other people find this video and it helps other people find my channel and see all of my discussion videos that I've posted. So with that being said, I've been Linky. And we'll see you all in the next video. Peace out.